Now, a new report has detailed allegations of bullying, harassment and discrimination in every fire and rescue service in England. A quarter of services, inspectors found examples of racist, homophobic and misogynistic behaviour, with the behaviour often excused as banter. Well, I'm joined now by Roy Wilshire of His Majesty's Inspector of Fire and uh, Rescue Services, who carried out this report. So mm -hmm. thanks so much for coming in to yeah, tell yeah. us about it. Um, there was an independent review into uh, the London Fire Brigade last year, which unearthed some pretty unacceptable behaviour. You seem to have found that that's the case across our fire services. Yes, yeah, so uh, as you've just said, we've had uh, cases of bullying, harassment and discrimination reported in every fire and rescue service in England. And we found evidence of racism, sexism, homophobia in at least a quarter of those services. What that links to something that's really important is trust. So firefighters can do a very difficult job. They need to be able to trust their colleagues to carry out that job. But all too often that, was, uh, that trust was undermined by geography, behaviour or things called banter that weren't really banter. And that led to people not wanting to call these behaviours out, both you know, staff and senior officers, and thinking sometimes that if they reported this behaviour, they'd be ostracised or vilified or their careers might be shortened. And finally, we found there was no standard for background checks for people joining the fire service. Some services do that well, many don't, and we think there should be a standard of background checks for everyone. How shocked were you at what you found? I, I, personally, I was very shocked. Some of the things we uncovered were uh, appalling, uh, appalling behaviours. I thought these were things, you know, decades past in the past. To still find them now, you know, in, in the 21st century, 2020 to 23 years we have, is it, truly shocking. And we don't want to offend our viewers, but give mm. us some idea of what some of the most shocking instances you found. Certainly some of the ones we found. So, uh, yeah, a senior officer using a racist term to refer to a black colleague and just laughing that off as, as banter. Two male firefighters joking, if you can joke about these things, about raping a female firefighter, then acting that out. Homophobic graffiti on someone's locker. You know, truly appalling. That's why our recommendations are so important now. And I will come on to those, mm. but, but do you think it's possible that there are predators in the fire service as we've seen exist in the police? I, I can't guarantee there isn't. I'd like to think there isn't, but we can't guarantee that at the moment because of those background checks and those other recommendations we're talking about. So how safe would you say it is for women and for minorities to work in the fire service at the moment? Well, I, things need to improve, undoubtedly, but I, I would still encourage people to join the fire service. It's still a fantastic career for people and there are thousands of men and women in the fire service still doing an excellent job, great places to work, but these behaviours we found are happening far too often and they need to stop. And uh, as you say, you've, you've put forward a number of recommendations. You've also highlighted the fact that people didn't feel comfortable about reporting some of this behaviour. So let's explore what's gone wrong. I mean, does it go wrong at the very beginning? What's vetting like, for example, for people joining the fire service? Is it adequate? So, as we say, for the, the fire service, you know, vetting is very much policing. It's a, a common thing. But background checks, so uh, the D DB... S people might have heard about, so that's background checks, a debarring service. Uh, th there's no standard for that, so fire and rescue services don't actually have to do that. So we're saying there should be, as a minimum, fire services including in the Rehabilitation of Offenders Act and then looking further, and that should be for everyone joining the service and they should have appropriate background checks for the job they're doing. And, and what about this issue of speaking out? Are, are leaders in the fire services to, to blame for the culture, at least of them not being able to, to report or feel they couldn't report bad behaviour? Uh, unfortunately, some leaders are, and I think leadership goes throughout the service. So we're not just talking about the chief fire officers and that level, but leadership starts on the fire station and other teams. So in some cases, leaders are to blame, and we saw some evidence of leaders saying to people, if, they, if you report something, it will be investigated by my friends, or you know, your career will be ended, or if you're on a station and want to report, you'll be ostracised from the station. So we think there should be a safe and confidential line, and it's one of our major recommendations, where people can report, whistleblow, if you like, and get these things seen to. And what do you think should happen to those people who have been engaged in this kind of behaviour? Well, ultimately, and that's a decision for the employers and the chief fire officers, but if some people lose their jobs over there, then so be it. We need to clean up the fire and rescue service.
And, and you've made 35 recommendations in all. So what's your message to the government this morning? Well, we've, we've been talking to the government closely. So when we make these recommendations, we talk to the people we make recommendations to. So the government, National Fire Chiefs Council, Fire Standards Board, we know they're accepting these recommendations, but I think these things need to move quickly now. It's time for this behaviour to stop. Well, yes, and, and how difficult will that be? I mean, clearly you have a, a path that you think needs to be taken to change things, but how difficult is it? How ingrained is this kind of behaviour in the culture of our fire services? Yes, yeah, so cultural change in any organisation is always difficult. You know, culture is the way we do things around here. But I need to reiterate, it's not every service and it's certainly not every fire station. Uh, so things can change. We've got recommendations about how to carry out misconduct investigations, how to do background checks, how to give better training to the leaders, and how people can report to these uh, instances and feel safe doing so. So I think they can make a significant change. And what do you think this does to public trust? Well, you know, the, the public will be shocked as I was. Some of these behaviours are appalling. But one thing I would like to reiterate, if you need the fire service, still dial 999, they will attend and they will help you. And uh, what's your message then to fire officers up and down the country who've been on the receiving end of some of this inappropriate and offensive uh, behaviour? What would you say to them? Well, first of all, they, they, um, they don't want my sympathy, but they have my support. So I, I understand what it must feel like if they don't feel supported at work. People should be able to go to work with dignity and respect and feel safe and be able to trust their colleagues. So we understand. That's why we've made these recommendations. And that's why we're calling on all those organisations I mentioned to implement these recommendations without delay. OK, well, Roy Wiltshire, we really appreciate you coming in to tell us about this. And mm -hmm. thanks very much indeed. Thank you.